Hello, children. I'm Victoria Carlton. You can just call me Vicky. And I love, I love reading Bible stories to kids. So I've just told you of the last couple of weeks, I've told you two stories about Joseph. And they're from the, the book of Genesis in the Bible. And today I'm going to tell you the third story. And this is sort of a rather complicated story. So I've had to make up a few notes so I don't miss any important bits to this story. And I've got a PowerPoint to tell you about this as well. So this is a, a really important story in the Bible because it teaches us a lot about loyalty and about forgiveness and about love as well. So think about your family. Think about how much you love them. and. Think about Joseph and what had happened to him with his brothers, and yet he did still love them. He, re he really did love them. So I'm just going to share a screen with you. Won't take me very many minutes or seconds, rather. Okay, let's see. Here we are. Okay, so we're at the story of Joseph, and this is story number three. Now. If you remember from the other couple of stories, um, Joseph was his dad's favourite. So Jacob Jacob had Joseph when he was quite an old man and he, he loved him so much. And do you remember he had a, a coat made for him, a lovely striped coat? And Joseph used to go out to his bigger brothers and he used to show off and go, oh, look at me, I've got a special coat. And his brothers didn't like him much. They didn't like him much because he was really, really spoiled. So one day they put him in a pit. He went out there to take them their lunches. All right. So they were working in the fields looking after the sheep. And they put him in a pit and they decided they were going to kill him. But then they decided not to. So they gave, gave him to some traders as a slave. They sold him. They actually sold their brother. Now, I know sometimes you might feel like selling your little brother or sister, but you wouldn't really do it, would you? Well, they actually did sell him. So off he went to Egypt and he was taken and he was sold. He was sold to one of the king's officials. But do you know what? He did really, really well. He became very, very liked in Egypt. People really liked him because he was really responsible and Basically, he did this amazing thing. He was really good at telling people what their dreams meant. Like God helped him to do this, okay? So he told the Egyptian pharaoh that this dream that he'd had that was really troubling the pharaoh, he told him that it meant that there were going to be some years where there will be plenty of food in the land and then there would be some years there would be another seven years, so seven good years and then seven bad years where there wasn't much food in the land and many people might starve. So he had these dreams. He had these very, very strange dreams. And Joseph told him what his dreams meant and said, you should store up some food so that when you have the bad years, then you will be able to sell the food to the people and you will be able to feed them. So Pharaoh thought this was amazing. So he decided to put, he decided to put Joseph in charge, in charge of all the food gathering and everything, so that really Joseph became almost like a governor of Egypt, like a really important person. And for seven years, they had plenty of food, all right? And Joseph made sure that they were gathering lots and lots of food and putting it in storehouses for the times when there wouldn't be much. So in the land of Canaan, where his brothers lived, when the bad years started, they didn't have much food. Like all the lands around there didn't have much food. So they heard that there was some food in Egypt. Now, they didn't know. They didn't know that Joseph, that Jacob was actually in Egypt. They didn't know anything about him. All they knew was that they'd sold him to somebody. They didn't know where he'd gone. So when they got there, and they went to buy their food because they went to Egypt to try to buy some food, they actually saw him. They saw Joseph, but they didn't recognise him because Joseph was all dressed up 
and he looked like somebody really important. So they bowed down to him. They bowed down to him, but he recognized them. He knew he knew who they were. And he he asked them how many brothers there were all together, and they told him. And then he said, Well, why didn't you bring your your younger brother, Benjamin? And he said, I, I if you come back again, you better bring Benjamin with you. And they were sort of a bit surprised at that. Why would he ask for that? So, and he said to them, For all I know, you might be spies, so I want to be careful about who you really are. Anyway, they they got up, they were given lots and lots of grain to take home. So they took it home, but and they paid for their grain. But on the way, they stopped to have something to eat and they were checking to get their food out of their saddlebags on their camels and they noticed that the money that they paid had been put back into the saddlebags and they thought that's really weird that's not right because we should be paying for that so they're a bit worried they thought oh are we going to be in big trouble so they went home and they said to their father Jacob oh look we've got lots of food and this very important governor let us take food but he asked us about our younger brother and he said if you come back again you have to bring your younger brother. You have to bring Benjamin with you. And, of course, their father, who really, really loved Benjamin because Benjamin was like the baby of the family, the younger one of the family. Um, and he said, oh, no, look, I've already lost Joseph. I don't, I don't want to lose Benjamin as well. But when the food ran out, you see, they really had to go back. And so they, they went back. And they, this time, they took quite a lot of money so that they could give the money back to Joseph that they owed him because they remember they'd found the money in the saddlebags. And they said to him, we, fa we found the money we gave you in our saddlebag. Here it is. And here's some more money. Can we buy some grain? Okay, please may we buy our grain. So he said, Yes, but did you bring your younger brother? And they said, yes, we did. His, his father didn't want us to actually bring him, but we did bring him with us. Then this time he saw his younger brother and he, you know, it was so hard for Joseph. He wanted to cry because he really just did love his brothers. Even though they'd done a really mean thing, he did really love them. So, but he still wasn't quite sure, I guess, about forgiving them. So this time he did something a bit odd. He gave them the grain. They took off to go back to Canaan. And, but he had somebody put in their camels, put their money back in their camels and their saddlebags. Okay. And also he took his special, beautiful golden goblet and he put that in Benjamin's saddlebag he put that there because he was sort of doing a bit of a trick which was a little bit hard for the brothers to deal with so what he said was I need somebody to go out after those brothers and I want you to go out and I want you to say that was a really bad thing to do one of you has stolen the gold cup one of you had stolen the gold cup that I love so much and I really need that back. So the officials went through the saddlebags and they found the gold cup in Benjamin's baggage and they said, we have to arrest you. I'm sorry, we have to arrest you, take you back and put you in jail to Benjamin. So all the brothers went back and they said, he would never have done that. We didn't steal. We're not the sort of boys who would actually steal. We wouldn't do that. And do you know what? When they said that, Joseph looked at them and he just cried. He cried and cried and cried. He couldn't keep it quiet any longer. He said, you don't know who I am, but I am Joseph. I am the brother that you threw in the pit. Right? I am the brother who used to show off and everything. I'm the brother you threw in the pit. But look at me now. God has taken a bad story about a kid who's thrown in a pit and just left there and then sold into slavery. He's taken a bad story and he's turned it into something good. 
because look at me now. I'm happy. I'm living here in Egypt. I've got a wife. I've got a really important job. And now I can help you. So the brothers were so, so amazed that Joseph actually loved them so much. And they all hugged each other. They all loved each other. And, and really, this is all about the way that Joseph forgave his brothers. Even though they'd done that really bad thing, he still had lots of forgiveness in his heart. And it's also about God can take a really bad situation and change it to good. So Joseph went to the Pharaoh and told him what had happened. And the Pharaoh said, look, bring your entire family. Get your, get your dad, get Jacob to come here, get their wives, you know, get them, everybody to come here and we will give them the best land to live on in Egypt. And that's what happened. That's what happened. Jacob came, all their household, all the kids, everybody, they came and they lived there in Egypt and they were given the most beautiful land to live on. So this is God transforming a story that went bad and turning the story into something that went good. And this story also reminds us to forgive others when they have hurt us as well. So thank you for listening to this story. And I look forward to reading you another story very soon. Okay, bye. For more of Victoria Carlton's tips, go to YouTube and search Victoria Carlton Programs. Victoria's products are available on Teachers Pay Teachers. They cover literacy, emotional intelligence, and Sunday school lessons. Victoria's website address, blog, and email address are on the screen in front of you. Victoria Carlton reserves the right of copyright on all her products.